What's going on fine people? It's Jerry Travis Smith with another video and today I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Word to create a really nice letterhead and there's a blue million ways to do a decent letterhead but I'm just going to show you one way that I've found that works for me and it'll cover some topics like using the grid lines, using symbols, and wing ding fonts, web ding fonts, so on and so forth and uh, basically you'll be able to make something that looks good helps you stand out a little bit and uh, also puts a little fun back into uh, a letter so let's get started by changing some things that the default word always has that messes with us and I know that you can set the defaults to not be this way but if you're using a stock version of word like I am here we just need to come to our home tab and click on this little dialog launcher here at the paragraph uh, group and then I'm going to come down and change two things line space and single and then space and after I'm just going to click down two times to get it to zero now we won't have any weird spacing issues so I'll click OK and you don't te technically have to do this part but I'm going to anyway, so I'm going to go to Layout, Margins, Custom Margins, and I'll go ahead and set the top margin to 0.25. It really wouldn't matter if we did this or not, but it just gives us an indication of, you know, how far we can go up or down or what have you. Okay, so it's real close to the edge. I am going to hit Enter one time before we actually do something here all right so now we're ready to actually start laying out the letterhead itself and the first thing I'm gonna do is center my cursor with the center button please do not press space 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 or tab 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 to try to center because every time you do I die a little bit inside now we could stick with this default Calibri font it's a nice sans serif that Microsoft has but I'm going to pick something a little bit more um, festive and stands out a little bit more than that. But still something very readable because a lot of times if you send a letter to a company, they scan it into a system. It does character recognition so that they know who you are and, and all that stuff. So we don't ever want to use a, um, a font that's too far out in left field. Um, and it's we still want it to be readable by humans and computers. So I think I'm going to go with this Cascadia Code Semi-Bold. That looks kind of kind of interesting. I'm a techie guy, kind of a, a, a nerdy guy, so we'll say Jerry Trevor Smith, just like that. And it's a fairly bold font. I'm also going to make it just a fuzz bigger. I mean, we don't want to turn it into just a pure uh, massive uh, situation. But, um, yeah, that'll work. That works just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and, and hit enter on that. And uh, I can hit my clear all formatting to change my font back to the Calibri um, 11 point. <clears throat> so now let's go to view, and I'm going to turn on my grid lines. And these are a little bit, you know, disconcerting at first. But uh, they're only temporary and just to help us get this lined up um, just right. And the way that we're going to creatively do our uh, letterhead is using some text boxes. So I'm going to go to insert. And we'll go over here to text box. And I'm just going to start with simple text box. We're actually going to remove the underlines from it. Or not the underlines, the outlines from it. Uh, so that really you know it doesn't matter and uh, you notice how I got it up a little too high and it immediately split my text okay so what I want to make sure and do here is change this to uh, hit this little layout options box that pops up in the top right corner change it to uh, behind text or in front of text okay one of those two things so uh, I didn't even do it I'm going to just put it um, behind text. doesn't really matter because you don't really want this touching your uh, text anyway. It can be really close to it. 
But anyway, if we do behind text, it doesn't matter. It'll be over. And don't worry about these, uh, this border and this white background. We'll get rid of all that um, shortly. It's not going to matter much anyway. So there we go. We'll we'll put that about that size right there. And I'm going to use these text boxes to do two columns. Uh, one column is going to have anything related to an address, an actual mailing address. The other column, we're going to do um, cell phone and uh, email address in the other column. And you could actually add any sort of information that you would want in your letterhead. So if you've got a fax number, if you've got a website, you want to put it there, it doesn't matter. This would this would work. So let's go ahead and start with uh, this. And notice these text boxes already have a little bit of margin, which is nice, because that means whatever you put in here is not going to be touching uh, your, your name that you just typed there. So I'm just going to go with uh, P.O. Box 123. And, um, oh, I just noticed something here. Uh, remember those settings that we changed for the entire document? Uh, well, we're going to have to change those for this text box as well. Uh, apparently, that's, that's built into the text box. I kind of forgot, to be honest with you. So let's just highlight everything in that text box. I'm going to go to my paragraph group and you see here they've done the same goofy thing we'll go to single spacing and spacing after zero and yes i know there's ways of changing that stuff up here but um i always use this option because number one i'm old and number two this works on uh, much older versions of word if you find yourself having to use those for one reason or another and we'll say jackson kentucky for three three nine all right and that will work for now and uh, when we turn these grid lines off we we actually could get more precise with this the reason I want the grid lines on is to make sure that this right part aligns beautifully with uh, with the margin over here okay so we'll we'll have it like that and now I'm going to make a copy of this box actually let's go ahead and and get rid of the uh, outline and the background before we make the copy. So to do that, make sure the box is selected uh, and you can do that by moving your mouse over the edge of the box and when you see that four headed arrow you click then you go up to shape format and I'm going to take the shape fill and make it uh, empty or no fill and then the shape outline I'm going to say no outline. Alright, now I'm going to make a copy of this box so just right click on the edge of it and copy and then we'll go over here right click and paste okay and then grab one of them so <clears throat> doesn't really matter and the whole idea is I want these to line up and that's why the grid lines are on okay so as long as that top edge is lined up okay we're good and to make this part <clears throat> the way we want it, I'll just highlight and move it to uh, right alignment. So the right align button, this is left, center, right, and justify. So we'll click right align, and there you go. Okay, so now we have uh, these two boxes in place. They're very dull at the, at the moment, but we're fixing to spice them up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and turn these grid lines off because they really hide the design and we don't want to do that. So let's go to view and uncheck the grid lines box. Okay, so there we go. We have uh, copies and now I'll go ahead and change this over here. And we'll do, um, we could actually, if we wanted to, uh, type the word cell and a colon and then put in the cell number. But I'm going to show you a way that I can indicate to somebody that I'm putting in a cell number. Uh, 272, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then here we will put in, well, so I made a copy of that box 
and pasted it, and it still has the crazy spacing that Microsoft is so famous for. So if that happens to you, and I don't know why it did, just make sure to go in here and change this. It should have stuck because, I mean, I copied and pasted. Anyway, uh, now let's try this again, and I'll put in an email address here. JTS at gmail.com. That's not my actual email address, by the way. But there you go. There's an email address. So we've got our nice two little columns set up. And now we're going to use some symbol fonts to really uh, spice this up a bit. So next to uh, PO Box 123. I'm going to go ahead and go to insert and we'll go to uh, symbols over here to the far right and you'll see by default it only has a few mathematical symbols but if we do more symbols okay this basically will let us insert any character from any font and if I hit the drop down here instead of normal text I'm going to change it to Wingdings, which has been around forever in the Microsoft world since Windows 3.1. So once you set it to Wingdings, you see we have all these little symbols, okay? And this is just a font, so we can highlight those symbols once we get them inserted, make them bigger, smaller, change the color, anything you want, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little mailbox next to this, okay, uh, just to make it cute and then I can leave this symbol box up and click to put my cursor somewhere else and even space and everything and then right here I want to put a little town uh, and the little town does not live in wingdings it lives in uh, what I like to call the symbol font of the the 90s internet that Microsoft did called webdings the whole idea of that was it would give you a set of symbols that you can easily put in any web page. Um, so I've got it set to Webnings, and there's a little city uh, as one of the pictures in here. So I'll just pick that. It's a little neighborhood, I guess. Or There's the city. Jackson's tiny, though, so I'm just going to pick that. Jackson's not very big. Okay, so we've got some little symbols in here, and we're going to go do the same thing on this other side. Okay, so I'll just uh, put a space. Okay, and then we'll go symbols, more symbols. And we can stick in webdings here. And I think there is a little cell phone in here somewhere. Um, I have to find it. Maybe that lives in wingdings. Let's go look. I know there's a little flip phone, an old school flip phone cell phone in one of these. Ah, there it was the whole time. Right next to the two phones in Webdings. So I'll just double click on that. Move my cursor down. And we'll insert something that kind of makes me feel like uh, email which I think there is a letter in here with a lightning bolt on it which is it's kind of an old metaphor but you know you you had to love the 90s living in it um, actually I think I'm gonna go with this uh, letter moving really fast that was another common way to represent email back in the day so we'll just hit space and there we go we are getting close to uh, going to the next phase where we just clean it up. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, also on insert, we're going to choose shapes and go down to just a basic line. Okay, a basic line. And I'll go about right here and click and drag the line. And we just keep it, you know, straight up and down. Uh, you can actually hold shift if you want to make sure that it only rotates on 15 degree increments okay so 
there we go we'll just end it right at the edge of the box here and this is a very sad dull line but if we go to shape outline on shape format here and go to weight we can set the weight of it but I'm gonna go to uh, more lines and this brings up your uh, more lines box in the right here and uh, we can change the color of it there's nothing uh, entirely unusable unusual about that um, so and I'm just gonna stick with theme colors on this and I'll show you why so let's say we went with this orange accent too uh, clearly I want my line to be thicker and I'm gonna go with this one right here I think it looks nice it was the uh, let's see what they call that thin thick very strange but then I can take the width of the line and make it as big as I want so I think four point looks pretty good for what I wanted to accomplish okay and uh, going back to this we can throw our little theme colors in here a little bit um, and some people would tell you that using colors in a letterhead is unprofessional or whatever yeah that can be true in some situations so is using the little symbols but if you're just making your own letterhead for personal reasons or whatever reason you want uh, you can use these colors if you if you see fit so now I'm gonna colorize my little symbols as well and we'll go with this this green let's see we've got this orange color and really if I was doing this for real I would not pick so many different colors but I just want to illustrate another point to you here uh, in just a second that people don't often understand and uh, let's just go with this gray all right so I've used all those theme colors and uh, this is the reason why okay if you go to um, design and you flip through these themes everywhere where you use the theme color it will change to a color that is supposed to you know go together because the theme colors are um, set to do that okay so if you change the full themes it also has some different fonts and things you guys know that you don't even have to click to try out a theme but if you do then you can get a really good look at it okay um, the default is the office theme but there's all these others too if I wanted it like that see those colors do go together without me doing anything but even if you just wanted to stick with the same office fonts you are free to go to colors right here and flip through these color uh, palettes so um, maybe there's one you like a little better okay so that my friends is a, uh, a basic letterhead that's uh, that's real easy to do and we're, we're using it's just built in things to word now I know you could get little pictures little PNGs and JPEGs and put next to your pieces of information just as easily but let's say that you are somewhere and you don't have internet access but you still need to crank out a letterhead this gives you an option so oh um, I hit enter because I was going to show you how to use the letterhead and I'm glad this happened so this um, line is responding to me pressing enter so what I need to do to it is click on it and this all important little layout options box make sure that it's set to uh, in front of text and uh, we'll say fix position on page and that way no matter how many times I hit enter it'll let me uh, use it okay and I'm actually going to stretch this line out a little bit to uh, match the margin of this page so let me go ahead and put the date in here like I was going to do a letter October yep there we go and we'll just stretch this out a little bit because you want your line to hit the margins and not the 
uh, margin of the box. I think that just makes it look a little better. And if you want to make sure 100% that this is centered, you can click on it and we'll go to shape format and align and you say align center and make sure it says align to margin. So we'll align center and now it is perfectly centered on the page. We have a little bit of a little bit of it sticking over which adds a nice a nice touch. And there you have it. That may not be the absolute best way to make a letterhead, but it's one way and it gives you the ability to move your little parts and pieces around using these text boxes. You guys have a great day. If you like this, give me a like. If you really liked it and want to see more of this kind of stuff, subscribe and I'll catch you guys later.